This is Motor Merc to Mission Control, initiating pre-flight check and requesting departure clearance. Jazz one I'm sorry, sir, request the kill. Five golf mic, uh, actually, I'm in altitude, descend me, team 1-1000. One, Cleared for takeoff. Army 72010, What's up, everybody? This is Motor Merc coming to you from beautiful Southern California. I've got some good news and some bad news today, and I'm going to be giving it to you in the most disorganized way possible because I don't actually know how to organize my thoughts. Actually, I guess the reason is because I haven't thought of everything I'm going to tell you yet, and uh, it's going to consist of a mixture of good things and bad things in whatever order they can come to me in. Obviously, the first piece of good news is that my camera's working, so that's great. I'm very happy about it. Uh, I thought that the camera was going on the fritz or that maybe my memory card was going bad. Uh, it turns out that actually the memory card and the camera seemed to be fine and what was happening was the cabling that connects my camera to the power source on my bike is what was going bad. So there's actually a break in the cabling and it's sort of like in the process of breaking down so it's like still a little bit there but it's not completely gone. So what the camera detects is that the connection is sort of like showing up and disappearing, like it, it's breaking intermittently. And what, that, what, what happens when that connection breaks intermittently like that is that the camera, I guess there's like a glitch in it that when the camera loses power while it's recording, it locks up. So that's what was happening. So now I'm actually running the camera, obviously, with, without having it tethered to the bike, and there's two reasons for that. Number one, it's the only reliable way to get the camera to work right now because I don't have uh, another cable yet. I've got to pick up another cable so I can reset up my tethering system for the power on that camera. And the other reason is because my bike is actually in the shop, my main bike. The 650 is in the shop. Nothing's really wrong with it. It's just kind of time for some maintenance. Actually, it's pretty overdue for some maintenance. Uh, it was time for the 32,000 mile service, I guess, uh, some time ago. And now uh, the bike is actually around 40,000 miles, so I figured it was time. But I had my last, I had my 16,000 mile service done at 20,000 miles, and I'm doing my 32,000 at 40,000. So I'm really doing 16,000 mile services every 20,000 miles which I think is okay because I, I treat that bike exceptionally well. I don't ride it aggressively. It's all easy highway miles. It's not too bad. You know, I also do my oil changes every 5,000 miles. I think the conventional wisdom is that you're supposed to do an oil change every 3,000 miles. But uh, actually the owner's manual for that bike, for the 650, so doesn't even suggest that you do an oil change more than every 7,500 7, miles which I thought was crazy, so I, I ended up taking the middle ground on that, I guess. I do my oil every 5,000, between 3,000 and 7,500, and, and that's fine. It's been working out. Bike is still running like a champ, uh, but I still do want to get the major services done because I want the bike to last me a good long time, so it's in there for valves, coolant, It's gonna he's gonna do the oil for me, needs a new chain, you know, it's just it's time to get all that major stuff done. Spark plugs is going to get thrown in there. So that's good. Had to nod to that guy over there. The other good news is that I found a rental place in Los Angeles. They actually have a, several branches in Los Angeles. It's called Eagle Rider. And they have in their possession several R1200 GS bikes. BMW R1200 GSs. And I'm interested in this bike as my next bike. Uh, I've been sort of promising myself that when I graduate from college, when I complete my master's program, I'm going to get myself a new bike. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. And uh, I, I wouldn't say I've got my heart set on it because I don't know that much about these bikes, but uh, the one that's most attractive to me right now 
is the R1200 GS because it just has a really rich feature set. It's obviously got a, a brilliant engine in it, and it's meant for uh, doing tons of miles, you know, and I do tons of miles. I do an average of 500 miles a week, not including leisure riding. Just my commuting is 500 miles a week. So I need a bike that's comfortable and is going to, you know, be suitable for doing huge numbers of... Oh, this, is, this traffic is going to be horrible. But anyways, I'm, I'm going to need a bike that's going to be suitable for doing those kind of heavy miles and is going to be comfortable for me. I'm going to get all the luggage for it and I'm going to... Uh, well, I'm talking like I'm already going to get this bike. I don't know if I'm going to get it or not. So the important thing is that I found a place that rents it, so I'm going to be able to try it out before I decide if I actually want to buy it or not. So that'll be nice. Uh, the bad news is that my plan was to go for a ride on one of these rental bikes this weekend. I was going to go to San Diego with my girlfriend, but uh, unfortunately the bike is booked for the next two weeks. So it's, <laughs> it's another yin-yang instance of good news, bad news there. The bike is unfortunately not going to be available until uh, probably until it's too late for me to even uh, to, to, to rent it anymore because school's going to start uh, getting pretty crazy. Thank you. So, anyway, at least it's nice to know that someplace has it available. So I'll be able to rent it when the time does come and see if I end up actually liking it. And I'm thinking maybe winter break or something like that, I'll get a chance to try it out. I shouldn't have even probably filtered to the front here. My bike is too gutless for this. I'm on the 250 today. Oh, it still picks up all right. So, heading to my shawarma spot for some dinner. I think that's all the topics I wanted to talk about today, actually. Yeah, uh, the big one, uh, well, I guess there is none that's really particularly bigger than the other. I'm interested in the, uh, in that uh, R1200GS. I don't know if I've really talked about it before. I know a lot of people think it's ugly, but uh, I actually like the way it looks. It really puts function before form, which I think ends up causing vehicles to look cooler. I like how it's just kind of, all the, the function is right there. All the parts are just kind of out there. There's not a lot of attention or energy wasted on making it look cool. And in, in my opinion, that actually makes it look even cooler. Uh, so yeah, anyway, I'm interested in that. I'm glad I found a place to rent some. And the other, what was the other thing I was talking about? Something else. I started off talking about it, and now I can't remember what it was. Uh, oh, the camera. Yeah, I'm glad that my camera is still working. I just need to replace the wiring. And, uh, the, <laughs> unfortunately, I, I've already got it into my head that I'm going to get another camera. So I'm, I've already been looking at all the nicer cameras, and now I want to... I want another camera even though I don't need one. I'm looking at the, you know, the new drift that's out there. Whoops. Looking at the new drift ghost. I'm looking at the, uh, I gotta tilt my head to match the camera now. I'm looking at the new ghost and looking at the Senna 10C. So, uh, yeah, there's a, a lot of options out there that are really tempting. But since, since I now know that I don't need one, it's going to be hard to justify it. So... So the shawarma place was out of shawarma. It's like 7.30 p.m. right now. We're still on the trailing end of the dinner rush and they're already out of shawarma. And it's like, I really love this place because they have amazingly good shawarma. They really do. It's like my favorite shawarma in the area. But the last few times I've gone there over the last couple of months, they've been out every time. So this time when I walked in there, I was like, yes! because I saw that they still had some on the spit, that little like rotating spit, if you know what it looks like when they're cooking chicken shawarma. So I got all excited, went up to the counter, I was like, I'm gonna have a chicken shawarma, and he was like, we're out. And I looked right at the freaking spit, and I was like, you're not out, it's right there, I want a chicken shawarma. And he was like, all that's sold. So I walked out of there, and he was like, wait, we got other stuff, we got lamb, we got kebabs, we got... And I was like, I, I came here for the shawarma, man. This It's a shawarma place, that's what you're known for. You gotta quit running out of it during the dinner rush. And there's people lined up behind me who all wanted chicken shawarma, too, and there's other people in there who, you know, I mean, it's just, like, 
if you if you're a restaurant and you have one thing that you do you can't run out of it while you're still in the middle middle of the dinner rush i mean maybe if you're like a super fancy pants place and you'd like like bakeries will tend to make a run of stuff in the morning and then they'll run out in the afternoon because like whatever they bake a certain amount throughout the day and then you know they're going to run out of it eventually and that's fine it's like that's how that type of business operates but like if you're a, a dinner place and you're selling dinner stuff and you run out of it during dinner and you're messing up you know it's like and he wants to he wants to sell me something else and i'm like i don't want something else i you know you don't go to a, a uh, an Italian place because you want pizza and then they run out of pizza and you get spaghetti instead. You just go to another pizza place. Unfortunately, there's no other shawarma place around really, so I'm just gonna go home and eat a sandwich.